Hold on. Lynette's on the blower. That's a tease. Lynette? Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. So we were talking about the. Uh, Have you sobered up, you lush? <laughs> I can't hear you guys too good. I don't know why. We're talking about because you're drunk. <laughs> How dare you? We're talking about uh, you and uh, Southwest. We were mm-hmm. just talking about me and the uh, jump rope competition. Oh, yeah. I don't like to talk about myself, but maybe like to yeah, recount that sure, a little sure. bit for the listeners. I'll send the, I'll send the video over. So, uh, Lynette, what, explain the Southwest situation. Um. All right. Well, I don't know what you already said, but... Uh, I was kicked off the Southwest Airline last flight coming home last weekend from Vegas after our Mangria event by the pool, which was a success. Uh, and uh, I was alone. It was I was coming home, and it was the last flight at 8.30, and it was delayed and sat around the airport and then got up to get on the plane around 9-something and uh Stood in line in the C because we're in Southwest, so we were the C, you know, A, B, and C. Of course, I was last in line to get in. Uh, and in the line, there was two pretty inebriated dudes behind me that were like, "Oh, blah, 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 blah. why are you going home?" Blah blah blah. I don't even remember what they were saying. And then, but it's the Southwest drunken Vegas mm-hmm. flight right. folks. Right. Yeah, right. right. And then there was so then the kid in front of me. I say kid. He's probably you know twenty two or something. Very good looking kid, um, model type. He, uh, turned around and uh, and started joining in on the conversation and said that he was on on the wait list to get on. He missed the, the other flight that he was supposed to be on. Now he's got to go to Burbank, and he was upset that he had to go to the Valley. Blah blah blah, and I was, you know, and I started talking with him, and um, he was kind of this like deep, this bubbly kid that was laughing at everything. Yeah, everything came out of his mouth he thought was funny, and I was exhausted. The last thing I wanted to do, my head was, I did not want to get on to a flight and sit next to a chatty Kathy. All right, you'd uh, spend the day by the pool. Mm-hmm. Yes, having was, having some mangrea. We, we were working, yeah, yeah. Was, and drinking, of yeah. course. Sure. But, it, but I had time to go back. I went to the room, went back, passed out for half an hour, got up, grabbed my stuff, had my bathing suit still on, and got my stuff. And I was like hungover by this point All right. and, and got to the airport. The people, uh, what people need to know about Lynette is uh, she has a low threshold for um, rowing. Okay. Mm-hmm. She uh, once that. she hits her point, she likes to chillax, sure. and uh, that's it. Yes, ma'am. She's uh, had her drinks uh, while the sun was shining. Did her work while the sun is shining is going to pass out on the plane. Right, right. No, Lynette, you're traveling alone. Yes. There's no one helping you through the airport or propping you up, obviously. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I, I drove out there on Thursday early with the Corolla lackeys, <laughs> and Adam drove the car home. Because I was going to just take the, you know, the 8 o'clock flight out so I could get home and be with the kids and not have to deal with Sunday morning. You know, I didn't need to be there. You guys had it everything down. I didn't need to be there at the show on um, Saturday night. So, I, you know, anyway, I wanted to get home to the kids. And I was, by the way, texting. Last text was to Olga. I'm on the plane now, so I'll be home, you know, God willing, hour and a half. I should be home. Tell the kids I'll see them then. That was my last text. So in line, the guys were, the seat, the, the, the airline was full. So I go towards the back of the plane, and there's a couple empty seats. There's one, like, second to last row on, on the aisle seat. Sit down in that seat. The kid in front of me, the, the drunk guys got their seats. I don't know where they went. The kid in front of me wound up behind me uh, because he was a gentleman. I think he let me go on first, whatever. He picked up my suitcase because it kept falling over. Oh. <laughs> it's cheap. And, uh, and he picked it up for me, so he dra- dragged it onto the plane and put it up into the overhead for me. And I said, oh, thanks. And then I sat down on the, on the aisle seat. And then he, there's a seat, in, the, the row in front of us to the left had an, an empty seat in the middle. And a, an older gentleman who looked like a businessman was on the aisle seat. So he... The kid got into that middle seat, sat down. I sat in the aisle seat, put my head back, and closed my eyes and was done. And I was, like, happy to be on that plane, relaxed. And All right, so 
Last flight out of Vegas, Friday night. Olga knows you're coming home. You're on the plane. You're on the plane. Olga's waiting because uh, Olga doesn't want to sleep at the house. And right. uh, you're going to show up about 9.30 or so and maybe 10 o'clock, see the kids, put them to bed. And uh, long uh, weekend in Vegas with the mangria and the pool and the whole nine yards. And uh, now it's time to head home. Right. And you're on the plane. Right, I'm on the plane. All and right. they, I hear my eyes are closed. I hear, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me. I open my eyes. It's the, the, the older gentleman on the aisle sitting next to the kid who sat in the middle seat and said, uh, do you want to switch seats? Oh, this, this guy wants to know he wants to switch seats. Nightmare. And the, the kid's leaning forward, all smiling and going, yeah, 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 like switch, you know, he has like a puppy dog, you know, mm. he just wanted to keep talking. And I said, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. I didn't make contact with, eye contact with the kid. I just said, no, no, no I'm okay, I'm okay, thanks. And I could tell the older gentleman didn't want to move either. Everybody was settled. It was time to go, you know. Also, so, it's a 51-minute flight. Yeah. Like, there's a certain thing where when you're flying back from New York, that's a commitment. But when you're flying under an hour, your ass is in the seat and the seatbelt's on. It's just this kind of like, let's Doesn't just matter. get the fuck out yeah. of here. It's over with. Wheels right. up. Wheels right. up. Mm -hmm. So, no thank you. The, put my head back, close my eyes. I hear a little... You know, rumblings going on now. I hear a little kerfuffle, and I hear, well, well no, she doesn't want to, she said she didn't want to switch seats. Oh uh, did you, did you want to switch, ma'am, did you want to switch? I said, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. No, and then, and then he says, I'm an asshole, the old, the older guy says, I'm an asshole. Now, immediately, flight attendants are surrounding them. Is there a problem? And they both look up at the, the guy, the, the flight attendant, and they say, no, well, well, the older guy said, this, this gentleman wanted to switch seats with this woman. She said no, and now he's calling me an asshole, you know, like, what the f and, uh, and they said, well, is there a problem? Is there, and then they said, no, no, we're fine, we're fine, and, like, let's go. They wanted to leave. Everything's fine. Flight attendants leave. No more than 20, 30 seconds later, I hear, I hear, uh, this guy's a piece of shit. And he turns around and he says, and he's looking at me like I, I know the guy. Hold on a second. Oh, what? my God. What? I, I'm, a, I'm a broken record with this. What is that part of humanity? You know, look, people can go, well, the guy had a couple of cocktails. All right. I've, I've had a couple of cocktails. I don't go get our gun and put it in my mouth and blow my head off every time I've had a couple of cocktails. Like... I've had a couple of cocktails. Yeah. I don't walk in the middle of the street. I don't bum rush cops uh -huh. and try to wrestle their guns away. Like, okay, couple of cocktails. Fine. Do you have to destroy your life on a couple of cocktails? Yeah. Destroy my life. Well, what I'm, What's but, to be gained? what I'm just saying is like, why do you have to get the flight yeah. attendant to come back? You become a Tasmanian devil socially. Right. Why? It's like you have a 51 minute yeah. flight. Just sit there. Shut We're up. done. Yeah. Let's go oh home. My God, I see this end of the night, end of the weekend. Kid. And what if something happens and you and this guy are sitting next to each other for the next 45 minutes very uncomfortably? <laughs> right. So, right. And I, 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 I don't want to talk. I'm exhausted. I don't want to talk to this kid. Now this guy looks up and says, I, this guy is a piece. This guy who looks like a very nice older gentleman, uh, you know, on business or whatever, sports coat on, clearly not drunk or anything like that, and went from you know, uh, very polite to, this guy's a piece of shit. I don't know what he said to have him say that. And now it's trouble. Now they said, well, we can't take off oh what's going God. on. And, uh, and then the guy, the, the flight attendants leave, I guess, to go talk to the captain. And the guy looks over, the older gentleman looks over at me like, what gives? And I said, I don't know him. I said, I did the crazy, like, you know, around me. I go, I think he's a little cuckoo, cuckoo. You know, I said, just, just like, diffuse, like, trying to diffuse it, just relax. I said, don't engage, don't engage. I think he's a little, you know, mm -hmm. so be quiet. Let's get out of here. And the next thing you know, the flight tends come up and go, you two gentlemen, get your bags and come to the front of the plane. And I go, oh, my God, Jesus Christ. And I thought, oh, poor older guy. Should I say something or not? And I just let it play out. I close my eyes. They, these two get up, and they go to the front of the plane. I don't know what's happening. Close my eyes. Ten seconds. Tw I don't know. Twenty seconds. The security gentleman comes walking up. The security at the airport uh, for the airline comes walking up. My eyes are closed, and I hear, excuse me, ma'am, you need to get your stuff, and you need to uh, get off this plane immediately. Immediately. I said, what? 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 And he says, let's go, let's go. I said, you got to be kidding me. And at that point, I cannot go, I can't argue. There's no, no. arguing because then I look like a crazy woman with her bathing suit on and her hair is all, you know, in a <sighs> ponytail, exhausted. 
I can't go, I didn't say anything. I don't know this guy. I can't, you know, you, there's no talking at that point. You just have to get up and you have to get your bags and you have to pray at the front of the plane. You can have a little discussion with the captain and or the flight attendant and say, listen, I don't know this guy and pray that you're going to let get back on the plane. All right, but hold on. Let me, let me oh go on a diatribe God. here. This is why we fucked ourselves with our own shitty society and our own fucked up rules, which is, I told Lynette, like, she's like, I wanted to tell the guy, I said, no, no, once the switch is yeah, flipped, right. that's it. It's like, ma'am, 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 ma'am. And then the next step is not your explanation. The next step is pepper spray and zip ties <laughs> and you on TMZ. Right. That's the next step. There is no eight no. second window where you can stop and go, listen to me. I don't know who this person is. I'm just in the back of the plane sleeping. Can we please take off? There is no allowance for human beings having a conversation with other fucking human beings. And not human beings who are at home, but human beings who purchased a ticket on your Mm -hmm. airline. Human beings who fly your airline frequently. Human beings who some customers. Can a customer have 10 seconds carved out to tell their side of the story? By the way, the customer who is completely quiet with their eyes closed. Can that person have a say? Yes, the middle-aged mom in the back of the plane. Can we just let... Can we just take off hear, with just her hear sleep? Her out. Yeah. yeah, that's the weird part. Is Lynette, it sounds like you had no interaction with anybody other no. than... But if this Zero. kid convinced the businessman that they were tight, then I'm sure he did the same thing with the flight attendant. Like, no, 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 that woman, she's my whatever. I mean, this kid right. was obviously convinced that there was con- a connection between you exactly. two. Right. right. Must have. The, must have. This kid, who I don't know, had it out for me. I mean... Well, he, he must- forgot to take his Thorazine. Yeah, you know, whatever it is, but I can go on any flight and say, uh, that chick over there told me she had a bomb. Uh-huh. And then exactly. I can go back to my seat and go to bed, and, and then she, I can She'll watch her get her. escorted off the plane. There's yeah. there's no part where she gets to go check my bag, yeah. or I have yeah. no idea what you're talking about. Lynette, well, if this is a very elaborate way to explain to Adam that you and the kid are moving in together, this is a <laughs> horrible plan. I don't think this kid plays for my team, unfortunately. I, uh, no, this, mm-hmm. I wanted to fucking strangle this kid at this point, and... I'm standing, I stand, I go to the front and the old man, the older guy's standing there and the kid is walking away. He sees me and he starts walking off. Mm-hmm. So obviously he got the boot. And I said something like, I just want you to know, I don't know who that person, let's go, let's go. That's fine. You know, get off the plane. You know, I, no, there was no talking. I said, I don't, I just want you to know, I don't know who these people are. Hey, ma'am, please, let's go. Oh, we could, happy to book you a flight for the first First flight out in the morning. The morning. Yeah, sleep it off. By the ma'am. way, first flight <laughs> in the morning saying. is not much of a consolation. Right. It's just uh, get up at five forty-five. You're like, gonna kick a woman worse. alone. By the way, this guy is a troublemaker. This kid. We don't know. There's nobody in the airport. Everybody's gone. Fucking place is empty. And now I'm wandering in a circle with this <sighs> kid that's wandering in a circle too. Now who knows what could have happened? You know, I mean, this. They don't know. They don't know. I don't know him. And, and by the way, they didn't know I had a big fat suite waiting for me back at the hotel. Either. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. No, but what they think you should have checked out of your hotel and had a cab to nowhere. Exactly. You should mm-hmm. have had nowhere to go. Yeah. In in their mind, yeah. there's nowhere to go. Right. To go find a hotel. Right. Right. Well, unless this woman's husband's performing at the Hard Rock in a <laughs> suite right now, she's pretty <laughs> screwed. <laughs> I kind of said, like, you know, listen, my, my husband's a comedian. He's, you know, he just did four shows at the Hard Rock. I've been working. That's fine. We can book you on a flight. The guy doesn't give a shit. The, mm-hmm. At that point, security, they don't, not listening to a word I'm saying. And the, uh, the kid now is over at the other ticket counter where there's nobody. It's dark. Oh. He's standing not at the ticket counter where we walk off and there they are. He's at the one over. I don't know why. He's just standing there and he's smiling at me. Oh my God. And I look at him and I said, I said, thanks a lot, you weirdo. Thank you, you weirdo. I said, I'm a mother with two kids waiting for me at home. I wanted to say I got a dog that's dying with cancer. And, uh, and I said, I'm a, I'm a mother that's got two kids now that's waiting for me at home. Thank you, you weirdo. And then they, the security says, ma'am, lower your voice. Do I have to call the, the po- do, you, do I need to call the, oh the airport God. police or whatever the hell he said? I said, go fucking shove it up your ass. And then... I walked you know away. Your voice, though. <laughs> <laughs> she said it in a hush. Yeah, tone. she under her breath. Yeah. And then the kid uh, ended up. I called Mike August to tell him that tell Adam, uh, you know, I'm going back to the hotel, and it's a long story, and I'm yeah. sleeping there, and I'm. I didn't get a that story. 
Yeah. You got a lot of you got about four mini stories that didn't sound at all like that one. Oh, that's remember. the part of life I'm most enamored with. Mm-hmm. Lynette missed her flight. <laughs> no, no. The flight's delayed. Mm-hmm. She's on the flight. Good. No, Olga uh, knows. She's Lin- coming home. Lynette decided to leave the plane. Yep. <laughs> she's just she's coming she's coming back. None of uh, none of which the first one made sense. Lynette missed her flight. The second one was flights delayed. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. She made her flight. Second one, third one was she's on her flight. Okay, good. Fourth one was nah, eh, she's tired. She's coming home. No. That's that makes no sense. I mean, one of my skills, you know, I'm texting with Michael. I'm not going to explain the whole thing. Evidently, like, I was so upset and shaking. I didn't know what to do. I was walking in a circle. But then I got on the escalator. I said, "Well, the only thing I can do now is go back to the hotel." And I saw that fucking kid standing by the escalator, smiling at me again. And I said, at least I got a fat-ass suite I can go back to. Have fun, you fucking weirdo. And I left. And that was it. And it, so, But hold on. It's not... The thing is, it's not his fault. He's a fucked-up kid. Right. It's the airline's yes. fault. It's the yes. airport's fault. It's yes. society's fault. It's our government's mm-hmm. fault. Like, yes. we have decided that law-abiding, tax-paying citizens are fucking enemy number one. And I don't know why. It's driving me nuts. I've been screaming. Lynette, how fucking, how often do I scream about this? All the time. At, at the right. moment, literally Lynette, right now. It's happening right yeah. now. When we're, when we're leaving the Arclight Theater and the cunt who's valeting is yelling at every single person saying, you're supposed to get this thing validated. And everyone's going, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry, sorry. Who's the one who yells at her and tells her to get her shit together? Yeah. Adam, wait, can I, can I mention? Lynette, okay. yes. yes. Who yes. tells her? Who confronts her? Who says, shut up? You, of course. Get your I fucking mean, you shit a, together, you bitch. You chapter in your, bu- in your first book about this. Yes. We're fucking paying people $9 an hour to fuck with our lives. Yeah. Right. And everyone signed off on it. And by the way, they're heroes. We have to fucking listen to you now. Right. That's that's where we're at. Yes. Sorry. Go ahead, I'm Gina. sorry. I did think your question was rhetorical, which is why I jumped in. Oh, sorry. Uh, but uh, when I was going back, uh, when I was at the McCarran flying home... Every single person in line was so defeated because the overweight, middle-aged guy in his little uh, outfit was going, it's been 10 years, over and over again. It's been 10 years, people. How many times do we have to tell you? Take your liquid out of your bag. It's been 10 years. It was like ear bleeding first thing in the morning. Oh, my God. I hate everybody. It was so (laughs) insulting. I know. Right. Yes. And we just talked to your friend Jody, who spent a month in Europe, and she was like, oh, it's so great. They treat you like an adult yeah. over there. Yeah. They treat you like an adult, like mm. a person who civilized. pays taxes, who pays, who, by the way, pays them. Mm. Can, can be trusted. <laughs> yes. Mm. Ugh. Fuck Southwest. It, Fuck it, Southwest. I'm dying to know what the kid said that implicated you as someone that had to be taken off the plane. Something I was insane. Like, okay, so this is what, so I love all our, our listeners. They're the best. We have the best fans because they all started tweeting Southwest. I'm not, I'm not flying Southwest. I can't believe what they did. Southwest, Southwest. So they got a ton of tweets because I talked about it on my podcast for crying out loud twice a week here on Corolla Digital. Um, and uh, so Southwest sends me a direct message on Twitter that says, uh, you know, uh, what does it say? We're following up on, 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 on everything, Lynette. I assure you'll be taking a deep, we'll be taking a deeper look into your experience. Please allow me some time to gather more information. I will follow up with you tomorrow. Thanks, Daniel. So then I get an email from Southwest. Now my blood boils Uh-oh. because the email says, uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll be. I'll read you the highlight. Hold on, gather yeah. yourself for one second. Can I say this? As Go long <laughs> as we have constructed a society where mm, uh, survivors of abuse and just flat out pussies are allowed to say, "I felt threatened," mm. then we're fucked. Because look, you can walk outside. A wind can blow and you can feel threatened if you're fucked up, if you're a shell of a person, if you're a piece of shit. I mean, if you're psychologically a mess, if your stepdad had at you with a fucking candlestick for eight years, 
Yes, well, you, that you, is pretty traumatic. You actually. can feel threatened. Yeah, fine. Every time you go into Yankee Candle. <laughs> now, now you're 41 years old and you're working on Southwest. You can feel threatened over anything at any time. This fucking bullshit where they're like, I felt threatened. I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Fuck you, pussy. Yeah. We, we need a standard for threatened and uncomfortable. Yes. Not you, broken individual with crushed psyche, mm-hmm. decided to yeah. feel insecure or threatened over yeah. well, what a- middle-aged mama sleeping in the back of the plane. Well, what about me now i'm feeling threatened well now you have a reason to feel threatened fucking weirdo that's right. an actual threatening situation all right. right you can uh, you can read the uh the letter they sent all right. you so things. basically the highlight is records indicate that you were removed when our flight attendants witnessed your involvement in an alt- altercation on board the aircraft before departure right. additionally the behavior displayed also reflected signs of intoxication <laughs> per faa regulations in the best interest of comfort safety our customers and crew southwest will remove a person person's conduct and appears or appears to have been disorderly abusive uncooperative offensive threatening intoxicated or sleeping intimidating or violent i like to put violent at the end yeah <laughs> Uh, so, what? Which one of those things were you when you were reading the back of your eyelids? Right. <laughs> Thank you. So while our captain in command had no direct contact with you uh, the, or the involved customer, information he received about your perceived involvement and behavior was integral to his decision to have you removed from the flight. To that end, we know that each involved party may hold a unique perspective toward the series of events that resulted unique. in your being That's so right, right, being yeah. denied uh, boarding. And I regret if your viewpoint doesn't align with our assessment or the circumstances. In light of your request, basically, they're refunding my ticket. That's all they're, they're getting. Here's the, the fucked up. Here's the other part too. We have so many fucking damaged pieces of shit walking around on this planet that when they go up and report to the pilot and say, I felt threatened, there, we got a situation, it's a code five, mm-hmm. people are out of control back there. There's something that's going on, Lynette, I don't know if you feel it, but I think you try to, you understand, you live with someone who tries to play it down and diffuse it all the time. Yes. This thing of heightening everything all the time, oh, we got a situation going on on the back of the plane. No, you don't. Right. You have okay. one drunken, stupid kid, right. and then you have a middle-aged dude in khakis, and you have a middle-aged mom who's trying to sleep. You right. don't have a situation. Yeah. We can right. just take the fuck off, give the guy Pepsi free, we're going <laughs> to land in 51 minutes. We don't have a situation. Why does everyone need to put three zeros behind everything in their life? Like, OMG, mm-hmm. exclamation <laughs> point, exclamation <laughs> point, exclamation point. Oh, my God. Like, I don't. I can't tell you how many times like you hear that message, like, "Oh my God, we need to talk." A situation is wrong, and then you talk to the person, like they ship too many T-shirts out to the event. Uh-huh. It's like, what? What is? Why did yeah. that necessitate this? A dial in an appropriate. What's alert with all system. the craze? Is it all the fucking Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? I mean, what is going on with the crazy? Oh, when nothing is really going on. I think I, I think I have a, a possible theory. Yes, yeah. this um, is a very, very litigious country. If they were already reported that there was a quote unquote situation and then 30,000 feet in the air, the guy punches the other guy. Well, you knew you already saw them fighting. You should have kicked them off. And yep. somebody sues and Southwest goes out of business. That's all they care about. That's well, true. Well, well, why do I got to get dragged it's because, into their dumb Because your that, name got brought exactly. up. Exactly. You know what? The, the Anyone key... that even remotely had anything to do with this psychopath has to be removed. So they don't get their whole company taken down, the which would not guy, happen. The older guy got back on the plane. They let him back on. That's crazy. Ooh, that's that's the crazy. It was just me and the fucking nut nut job. Oh my god, off. Lynette, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's yes. the fucked up part. Throw the chick off the plane. Right. Oh and god. by the way, I wasn't talking at all. These two were going, This guy's a piece of shit out loud. We're in front of kids. Says oh. it out loud. But, it wasn't that loud, but these two those two were arguing. I was not involved in the argument. But, uh, I got asked if I wanted to switch seats. I said no, and then I told the no. guy, "Diffuse, be quiet, Shh, don't just don't engage." Just All right, bunch. fuck Southwest, and let me say this: we have removed the ability from human beings to be human beings. Mm. So, what a robot does is a robot says, "When you roll through a four-way stop sign without coming to a complete." 100% mm-hmm. stop, you get a ticket for $241. That's mm-hmm. what a robot says. But what a human being says is on a Sunday 
at 7.30 in the evening when there's nobody else around and you don't come to a full and complete stop, but you're going two miles an hour, a human being says, no ticket for you. I'm a human being that you pose no threat right. here. We're now removing, and this is what lawyers do, and this is what government does. We remove the human being part from being human beings. Yes. So now you just have these fucking robots come on a plane in windbreakers. Ma'am, ma'am, I need you to do, ma'am, ma'am, I need you right now for me. Go ahead, get, get your bag, step off the plane right now, okay, right now. That's what we've done. Yeah. We've cr- created a fucking society. We've created it. We're as adults... We can't walk around and essentially live the life we want to lead because we've paid people eleven dollars an hour to fuck with us. Well, human beings aren't being human. Thank oh. you, no. man. Thank <laughs> well, you. they're flowchart people. They're if this, then right. this. All right, Lynette. Sorry, baby. 